PvP in Sea of Thieves is something we all deal with. So I've compiled the best tips and advice I've learned over 3,000 hours of playtime. This video will tell you all that you need to know so you can stop sinking to those Reaper pajamas wearing 12 year old teat sucking Giga Chads. I know, I know, you can thank me later, or you can thank me now by telling me how beautiful I am in the comments and, you know, like subscribing and leaving a like. Thank you. Today I'm going to be talking about a mix of basic and advanced tips. Uh, basic tips meaning they're simple to understand and don't really take long to master. Advanced meaning it requires dedication and a willingness to improve, as well as a fair amount of time. But don't fear, no matter what, there is a tip in this video for you. The first tip we're going to be talking about today is audio cues. Audio cues are so simple, they are so basic, but they are such a game changer and will honestly change your fights. The first one I'm going to be talking about is water splashing. The sound that it makes when you leave the ocean and grab onto someone's ladder. So many times I will grab someone's ladder and think, okay, they've heard me, what do I do? Oh, I'm just gonna climb up and, and you know, hope they don't kill me. But then I climb up the ladder and get on their boat and I see them on their wheel, just, you know, spinning it left, spinning it right. And I'm just stood there with my blunder, staring at them, shoving it up their asshole. The water splash is very important to know because it tells you someone's boarded your boat. I'm boarding ours. Yeah. I'm blowing up the keg on the... Island, I got him off. Another audio cue I'm going to be talking about is the mermaid. The iconic noise that it makes means someone's in the water coming towards your boat. Um, your mermaid will never spawn next to your ship while you are sailing. If you fall off, you have to wait about 10 years for it, meaning the enemy that you're probably chasing is in the water next to your boat, and you will shortly hear the water splash on the ladder. The last audio cue I'm going to be talking to you about is by far the most important. Not only does this tip tell you if someone's on the boat, not only does this tip tell you what weapon the enemies are using, it also tells you how you're going to approach the fight and what you're going to do in this situation. I'm talking about weapon equipping. When someone pulls out a sword, it has that distinguishable shing noise, right? When someone pulls out the blunder, you hear that weird little I don't know, I can't do it, man, I can't. When someone pulls out a weapon, it has a distinguishable noise, not sounding like any other weapon in the game, and you know, okay, this man's pulled out a sword, I'm not gonna go too close and get caught in a sword storm, or, oh, this guy's pulled out a blunder, I'm gonna stay away and use my eye of reach and blunder bombs, or I'm gonna, you know, do X, Y, and Z, I don't bloody know, all right? This is one of the most important tips in today's video. But but don't leave, don't leave just yet. Don't don't click off. Keep watching. Give me viewer retention and also the best tip is at, you know, near the end of the video, so stay tuned. The next tip I'm talking about is weapon loadouts. Now, hear me out. This is pretty deep and it's also fairly advanced because of how long it takes, but you know, just just listen. Everyone is different and has different playstyles. Think of it like a competitive shooter like CS:GO. You'll always have a support player, or an entry fragger, or someone to lurk and control the map. Or think of it like League of Legends. You have a support tank, AD carries, jungle players. Everyone has a different playstyle, so you should never just use the best loadout. Instead, you want to use the best loadout for you and your playstyle. For example, I'm a blunder sniper player. In every game, I've always done damage from range, hence why I use the sniper. Like in League of Legends, I was an AD carry. In CSGO, I was a support for the entry fragger. In New World, I used the musket. Then I have the second weapon, being the blunderbuss, which is a close range contingency plan. Should someone get too close to me, I can get out and do some insane damage. It's a low risk, high reward role. But you, you may be a cutlass flintlock user. Someone who likes to get in to do quick damage while having some medium range allowing for distant shots from the flintlock and to finish off with the cutlass sword lunge, while also having the ability to block fellow swordsmen should someone rush you with the sword. It's a lot deeper than you think, it's, it's more than black and white. I highly recommend checking out my video where I go in depth on every loadout you can use, why you'd want to use it, when you'd want to use it, the pros and cons of each different loadout and weapon in which situation, it's a very comprehensive video and I highly recommend it. 
The next tip I'm talking about is fairly advanced, but honestly it changed my PvP game. It made me win so many more fights. And it is learning the layout of every ship in your own time. If you know exactly every part of each ship, how the object collision works, pathing which can confuse enemies, cheeky routes which can get you out of trouble, then you will have a much better chance during on-ship combat. For example, I spent 15 minutes analysing the sloop at an outpost one day, and I found some cool outplay mechanics which I could use should I ever need to. I know how to get to the ladder from a certain location, which will completely confuse the enemy and make them think I'm not even on their boat anymore. You know, they're just going to be so confused when I suddenly pop up behind them with my blunderbuss. Learning the layout gives you confidence and gives you advantages not even the, the casual player would know because you've dedicated time to it, which they haven't. Next up, I know you've heard this, so I won't talk about it for too long. It's a must do, but it's just practice. Experience will only improve you and it will improve you tremendously, allowing you to outsmart enemies more and sort of give you a sixth sense like, you know, Spider-Man, you, you get spidey senses and instincts to know like, okay, he's shot my ship at this time and has done this much damage to me, he's probably going to be boarding me an X amount of time. You know, it, it makes you more aware and smarter in game. Constant running from PvP will only make it more difficult for you. So dedicate time to practice and server hop for PvP. Also, practice with loot on your ship. Learn not to fear losing your loot. And also, just don't get discouraged when you lose. It happens to all of us. I think, you know, more often than I'd like to admit. And, you know, if you, if you just quit, then what are you doing? Like, this isn't the game for you. This leads me nicely on to my next tip. Tip number five. Don't be scared. This comes with experience, but the reason why it's its own tip is because it's that important. Losing your loot is part of the game. Practice with loot on your ship, so when it counts in a normal session, you will not be nervous. Chances are, if you're watching this, most of your opponents are better than you. Don't fear that. Think of it as an experience against better players which you can learn from. And if you kill them and sink them, well done! You've just done really well and you are improving. And if you don't, well, you've just learned a lesson. Keep composed. Don't panic. If you panic, you overthink. If you overthink, you miss your shots. If you miss your shots, you die. And if you die, well, your ship ends up at the bottom of the ocean. Well, actually, it doesn't really. It usually despawns before it gets there. But you know what I mean. Spawn into a world. Get a little bit of loot. Spend half an hour doing sea forts and then fight people. Tip number six. Use your surroundings. Think outside the box. The world in Sea of Thieves is more than just islands, forts, shipwrecks and water. Everything can be used in PvP if you know how. Forts have stationary cannons, allowing for easy chain shots and hits on an unsuspecting enemy ship. On top of this, they have kegs to finish off the opponent should you get the chain shot off, and they usually have a decent supply of food to stock up on as well. Islands can provide escape paths, such as Marauder's Arch and Thieves Haven having arches to sail through on a nimble ship, allowing for outplay against bigger ships, as well as stationary cannons and shallow beaches to surprise your enemy. Now what I mean by shallow beaches is, if an island's beach extends further than you know you can see, so underwater the beach continues pretty far, then if you go wide around this island and do a U-turn, chances are the enemy's going to go close to the island to do a U-turn, and because they've gone close to that island, they're going to hit the beach, and their ship's going to stop, and they're going to take holes, and they're going to go in a weird direction and be completely confused, all because you had that knowledge. Rocks, as you know, can act as anchor turns for you to harpoon and reel yourself into them. Now on to tip number seven, the most important tip, and I'm probably screwing myself over just by telling you this, because it's going to completely, like, if this gets enough traction, it will change the meta. No one uses this ever, and when I see someone else using it, I honestly panic. And I know I told you earlier, don't panic, but when I see someone else using this, I panic, okay? So please don't use this, but, you know, just remember it, okay? Thank you. Blunder bombs. Use blunder bombs, please. If you want to stay alive, use blunder bombs okay the, the amount of times i've died to a blunder bomb you know from myself is more than an enemy is more than i've died to an enemy using them right and, and that puts things into perspective just shows you how dumb i am really anyway blunder bombs they do 50 percent damage if they directly hit an enemy 
meaning that's half of their health gone. One pistol shot, two sword swipes, half of the blunderbuss pellets hitting, one eye of reach shot, or one more blunderbomb just hit hitting them again. That's crazy, as well as providing knockback Meaning, if someone is, you know, climbing up your ladder and you blunderbomb them, chances are it, it may not hit them directly, but it's going to knock them back and do maybe 20% damage. Also, if someone has been shot by your flintlock or they've been hit by a cannonball a couple times on their boat and you're on, the, on a stationary cannon or even on your ship's cannon and you know that you've got a hit marker from a cannonball, shoot two or three blunderbombs at their boat, it's going to stop them repairing, it's going to push them back, it's going to make them eat it could even kill them and it just buys you so much time and allows their ship to fill up so much faster it also stops them throwing water out of their boat because how are you going to throw water out of your boat when you're being you know pushed all over the place on your boat and unable to figure out where you are you're just going to throw it back into your boat blunder bombs are very very good you cannot counter blunder bombs you can't shoot them and break them you can't sword block and you know take no effect blunder bombs cannot be stopped. I highly recommend it. Now, a little bonus tip. Uh, when you board someone, just chuck a banana on the stove. You know, just cook Gordon Ramsay it up a little bit, but then forget about the banana and bugger off to your boat. It's, it's going to set fire to their boat eventually. It's just a fun way to mess with people. If you're sailing by an island even, just chuck a boat, banana on their boat. I'll usually do it. Uh, just, just start cooking a banana and it'll set their ship on fire. Oh, and another tip from someone in my Discord from Hideki4. Cook food to make it gooder. I'd like to give you all a huge thank you if you've watched this far. It really means a lot to me. Video retention is one of the greatest things in, in, in YouTube and it really helps me out. It helps my channel grow so much. So thank you so much for watching this long. I'd also like to thank the people in my Discord for boosting and getting us to level 3. I really appreciate that. You can join up in the description if you want to talk to me, talk to the community, find people to play with, blah, 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 blah. Just join the Discord, all right? Just join it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I don't want to make this a 15-minute video because it means you'll probably not get as many clicks. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, much love, everybody. Uh, I have a lot of stuff coming out, a lot of changes to the channel in mind. Uh, honestly, there's so much going on in my head at the moment, but I'm unable to do anything because I'm left here with this terrible monitor, which barely works. <gasps> anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, follow me everywhere and talk to me. Thank you. Bye-bye.